Welcome to section two of six of our personal finance class. Now that we have our goals down, we're ready to tackle financial statements. Below I've included a few links walking through a couple concepts related to the balance sheets that you can better understand assets, liabilities, and equities. But all in all, it's not super complicated and we'll be able to tackle most of it here. Now your first response might be, I don't want to learn accounting. However, it's, this is super useful. It's super useful within personal finance. It's super useful within business. And it's actually not incredibly difficult. You don't need to become a pro accountant within this. But these are useful concepts that you can use in a variety of situations. And they're, because they're pretty intuitive, they're relatively easy to learn and also to remember and retain that knowledge. So let's dive in with the three parts of the balance sheet and the equation. The balance sheet equation is assets equals liabilities or your debt plus equity. The balance sheet is called the balance sheet because it has to balance. This is an identity. It's an accounting identity that must be followed. So let's dive in from assets and move from there. So what is an asset? An asset is something that you own that has value, that has market value could be used for something. So you could think of something as basic as cash. That is an asset that's worth something. Um, your car is something that you could sell for value. And second, liabilities or debt. You should have a pretty decent concept of liability, but we'll step into more of that later. And the third section of equity is whatever's left over when you subtract all of your liability from your assets. And there, of course, there are more descriptions in the links below. Within the balance sheet, we tend to classify our assets into two different kinds, two different categories. The first is current assets. And it's something that you can convert into cash or is cash. So something you can convert into cash in the short term quite easily. So what are some examples of things that you have that you could turn into cash relatively quickly? Well, a check-in account, a savings account, even, things even um, like stocks or even bonds, you can, re you can usually sell relatively easily. The second category is a, a long-term asset or a fixed asset. And these are items that are a little bit harder to convert into cash. Now, what would be an example of a, of a, of a long-term investment? Well, you could think of a house. It's relatively difficult to sell a house. You can't do it in a day or two. It takes some time. And sometimes if you want to sell it quickly, you'd have to perhaps discount the price of the, the home and not get your full value out of it. So it's a, it's a little bit harder to sell and convert into cash. It's harder to make it liquid. So speaking of a house, as far as trying to understand you know, what are assets and what are not, what I recommend is is imagining or walking through your house and identifying what assets there are. And so an asset is something that has market value and something that you could sell for. So if you look around and you say, oh, well, here's my sofa. Uh, maybe if you were to actually try and sell that sofa, would you be able to get much out of it or perhaps not? Um, maybe you are looking, say, outside and you see a car. Well, a car is definitely an asset. It's something that you could sell off. It could be your house itself is an asset. And so there are certain items that could be considered assets and other items that really aren't assets, even though they are things that you own because they don't have a market value to them. Now in the link below, it walks through um, the three purposes of assets. Now, what are they? The first is that they can reduce expenses. So if you own a car or if you own a house, Perhaps now you do not have other expenses related to transportation or housing, and you could actually reduce your, your expenses by purchasing a car or purchasing a house rather than say leasing or renting a car or perhaps renting a house. The second category is to, to increase income. Now, how can an asset increase income? Well, investments. If you own a bond or stock in a company, that can generate interest income for you and it can overall increase your income. The third purpose is to store wealth. And the, the key thing here to remember is an asset should be able to, you should be able to sell it for a certain value. So 
I mean, a, a savings account can store wealth, assuming relatively low inflation. Um, gold could. Again, bond, stock, etc. A car is not a great um, use of uh, storing wealth, since cars are worth less over time. And so an asset can, can serve in more than one category, but it doesn't have to. So there are there are some assets that serve in one category, some in two, and some potentially in all three. It's just something to keep in mind. Now on to liabilities. What is a liability? Well, li a liability is simply your, your debts, in a way, what you owe to others. And within liabilities, there are short and long-term liabilities as well, just like short and long-term assets. However, it's, this concept is not quite as important for personal finance. A short-term liability, you'd be required to pay it off quickly, while a long-term liability, you would not be required to pay it off quickly. Now, most people think don't think in terms of short-term and long-term. They think, I am making, say, monthly payments on my debt, and when do my monthly payments end? And if they're, they're going to end soon, they would be a short-term liability. And if it's way off in the future, then it would be a long-term liability. This is how most people think of them, rather than short or long-term liabilities. It's just considering how long do I have left to pay on this debt. Now, I'd, cons I'd suggest pausing the video for a moment and to think through what, what are your current liabilities in your life? What are they? What are they? What are they? Pause, pause, pause. Okay, continuing. Um, so some of them are a little bit more obvious than others. So for example, a mortgage is, is a liability. There is your credit card. That's a liability. That's debt that you owe. Um, your taxes can potentially be liabilities. You could have a tax liability of what you owe, say, to the IRS. Or if there's some shady character that you borrow money from, yes, that could be a liability too. So there are lots and lots of forms of liabilities, more than we would actually think in many scenarios. Whenever we discuss liabilities, the question that a lot of people ask or opinionate on, offer their opinions on, is whether debt is good or bad. And my answer to that would be yes. Of course, that seems like a non-answer. But I would say, what are you using it for? And once again, the link's below. Some a useful outline of this approach, but you could use debt, for example, for different things. One is for convenience, so stuff that you're buying. A second could be perhaps to reduce your expenses, say to buy a house. A third could be to increase future income. Say you borrow money in the form of a student loan in order to complete a certain education so that you can get a job that would be higher paying that you would get otherwise. So you're increasing your future income with that liability. So these are the three different uses for it. And so in, in what form do we see liabilities? You probably already know this, but there's this concept of principal and interest. Principal is the, the amount that you borrow and interest is the extra beyond the principal you have to pay back. And there's this great concept from one of the links below about renting someone else's money. If you're renting someone's house, you're going to have to pay them for it. If you're renting some, somebody's money, then you need to pay them as well. We call that interest, renting money. So it's a clever concept. Now, equity, also known as net worth or sometimes as wealth, all three of those mean essentially the same thing within personal finance. It is what is it? It is whatever is left over. So if you rearrange the equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity, and do assets minus liability equals equity, that is what it is by definition. So if you have $100,000 in assets and $50,000 in liabilities, then your net worth or your wealth or your equity is $50,000. Now, a basic example, say, is your home. Let's say your home is worth $200,000. That's what you could sell it for. And there's currently a, a mortgage on that home of $125,000. Asset of 200000 
liability of 125,000. So your equity, your net worth, would be $75,000. Now that's just with a house, with a single asset. You could do that with all of your assets, with all of your belongings, and that's how you can calculate your equity or net worth. So now that we've understood kind of the, these three parts of it, I would encourage you to go through a quick exercise and calculate your assets, calculate your liabilities, and then with those two numbers, calculate your equity. So a quick aside as far as which side of the ledger we are on, um, whether something is an asset or whether it's debt, that, could, that depends on the perspective. So you could borrow money or you could lend money. So in one situation, you have an asset and another, you have debt or vice versa. So if debt is fundamentally renting someone's money, but you could be the lender instead of the borrower, so you could rent your money out to others. And so that's what we would call interest. So interest, interest can be interest revenue, or it could be an interest expense. And that will be on your income statement, which we'll be talking about. But the principal amount that you borrowed or the principal amount that you lend that is on the balance sheet. So let's do a quick quiz. Let's say that you borrowed $20,000 in the form of student loans. For you, is this an asset, liability, or equity? Now, after 10 years, you'll be paying off, let's say, a total of $35,000. How much did you pay in interest? And how much did you pay in principal? Now the answer is $20,000, that's going to be a liability. Um, in interest, you have $15,000, and your principal is just the initial amount borrowed, which was the $20,000. Now in the United States, do you know who probably owns your debt for student loans? That's probably the United States government, so please pay it back. As far as what is wealth or equity and what is not wealth, one of my favorite examples is an ad that I remember seeing growing up, and I provided a link for it below. But it's, it's a very powerful example that I remember to this day. So enjoy. So let's do an equity calculation. Let's say you have $10,000 of cash and you have no debt. What is your net worth? Well, your assets are $10,000. Your liabilities are zero. $10,000 minus zero is $10,000. Let's say you buy a new car for $10,000 and then you drive it off the lot. And as soon as you drive it off the lot, if you were to sell the car then, it would be worth $8,000. What is your net worth now? Well, right now, you own a car which is worth $8,000. You have no other assets. You have no other debt. So $8,000 minus zero is $8,000. So what just happened? Well, there was a $2,000 expense, a $2,000 depreciation expense, which we'll get in, which we will, we will get into later. But essentially, your net worth has fallen by $2,000. As far as net worth goes, people often overestimate their net worth because they tend to overestimate how much their stuff is worth. People will think, oh, this TV is so awesome, it should be, I could, I could sell it for X amount, or this car is so great, I could sell it for Y amount. But in the end, if you were to actually sell these things, how much would you have at the end of this process? Mm, probably less than you think. Now, the other concept to recognize with net worth is that just because net worth, let's say two individuals have the same net worth, that doesn't mean the, that the backstory is at all the same. So let's take two people. One has $1.1 million in assets and a million dollars in liabilities. And so the net worth is $100,000. Is that the same as someone who has $100,000 in assets and $0 in liabilities? Well, that net worth is $100,000. So their situation looks like it's the same because they have the same net worth. But those are two very, very different situations. In one situation, it's someone who's extremely levered. Lots of le debt leverage. And in the other, they have no leverage or no debt at all. So it, th these are two very, very different situations 
So these are not mathematical identities that we're talking about. Life is more complex than these mathematical identities. Let's do another practice problem. Let's say you have $5,000 in your bank account. You then spend $500 on Sour Patch Kids to eat because they're yummy. And then you spend $4,000 on a car, which you could then resell after you buy it for $3,500. So how much do you have in assets? Well, at the end of this process, you would have, let's see, $5,000 in cash. You spent $4,500. Well, you have $500 left over. You also have this car that you could sell for $3,500. So $500 plus $3,500. Well, that's $4,000 in assets. If you have, say, no liabilities, you would also have $4,000 in net worth. Let's do another example using Alice from the link below. She has a car that she purchased for $5,000, but it's only worth $4,000 today. She has savings of $250 in the bank. She also has a car loan of $2,700. Last, she has student loans of $53,000. What are, what is Alice's assets, liabilities, and equity? Now, if you go through this, you have a car that's worth $4,000. You have savings of $250, so she has assets of $4,250. As far as liabilities go, she has liabilities of $2,700 for her car loan and $53,000 for liability. That totals $55,700 in liabilities. If you subtract one from the other, well, you end up with a negative number. Can net worth be negative? Can equity be negative? The answer is yes. Yes, it can be. So going back to our previous discussion toward the beginning of today, what is your personal balance sheet? So pull out a piece of paper and create your personal balance sheet. List out your assets, list out all of your liabilities, subtract the two and come up with your net worth. Now, what do you believe your personal balance sheet, balance sheet should look like five years from now or 15 years from now or 30 years from now? When you start walking through this exercise, uh, people call this within personal finance a, a personal financial plan on how this balance sheet evolves over time is a, is a very important part of a personal financial plan. Now, if you've made it through the readings and the exercises today, you did it. You made it through balance sheets dragged through the drudgery of balance sheets, but you made it through and you did it. So now let's torture you with income statements.